Hi guys. Hey, Queen Team. Guess what? I found another one who likes to talk and say hi. A very, very friendly lady. Her name is Bernadetta. She'll say hello. Hi, Bernadetta. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, thank so you. So nice to meet you and welcome to Shanzu. Thank you. It's I so beautiful here. <laughs> I like it. You look so gorgeous. Asante. Are you here on holiday? Yes, I'm here on holiday. Okay, we came next from next three days. For how long? Oh, okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know what? You, um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. You saw me recording, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You told me you're a single mom of a seven-year-old or a seven-year-old boy. Okay. So we were talking. Remember, guys, the last time I was talking about uh, single moms and how it is that all of a sudden I don't know what's happening. It's like guys don't want to take responsibility. So I was just talking to Bernadetta, who's a single mom. So before I say too much, why don't we hear from her? Guys don't want to be responsible right now. As in, they don't want commitment and they don't want someone who is going to question them. That's what I think. Yeah. But then they are men. Uh, didn't they grow up seeing their fathers taking care of bills? Right now, it's different. I don't know where they have gotten that notion or how things change. But currently, they don't, they don't want responsibility. But I think they also they have peer pressure because when they see other men not doing it, they also don't want to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For me, I have a son who is seven years old. I want to teach him values starting like from right now. Mm -hmm. I want him to know that it is not okay not to be responsible. I want him to be responsible and I want him to stand on his own, to have his own ground and to be like his mom, like me. To know that there are certain things in life that he will need to take care of. I, don't, I will not always take care of things for him. Mm -hmm. When he grows up, he also needs to do that by himself. So what's going to happen now? Because I'm trying to help ladies uh, identify men who are marriageable. <laughs> I think at this point you can't do much because it's about... <laughs> it's a personal responsibility. I mean... It's whether it's for them to choose if they want to be married or not. Okay, personally for me, I'm not looking for someone to marry. I've gotten to a point where financial stability comes first, more than that marriage. Because even if I marry that man, and we are having a fin finance issues, that relationship is not gonna go far. Actually, for me, I think in marriages, the most important thing is to be financially stable, because you can't go getting kids and you're not financially stable. Who will take care of them? How will you run the bills? Because the blame game will start. Who should take care of this? Who should take care of that? But you see, if money is there, that is not going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Hi, African Queen family. How are you doing? Good morning. I am in a very beautiful environment. Wow. People out there doing things, having fun. I'm at a, one of the nice hotels in the area. Sipping on a drink here passion juice and remove all this stuff I'm listening to music in the background it's so nice mm. Mm. African Queen Mall family. Wow, this place is so beautiful, guys. Mm. If I could show you how beautiful it is, take a look for yourself. That's the bar area there. It's high clips over there. And out in the background, that's what I'm seeing. I don't know what those are called, some sort of sailing raft or something like that. International tourists just having a good time. Man, Kenya. Man, this is the place to be. Man, Mombasa. Yeah. They just delivered some lovely samosas here. Mm, look at that. Welcome to Mombasa. And the music in the background is just fabulous. I'm sure it's not going to be caught, by the way. But. That's a lot of samosas for one human being, yeah? <laughs> I wish you were here, we could have shared with you people. So, how have you been? So, I was actually doing some research, I'm actually also on my computer. Yeah. 
what a lo what a lovely place to work oops what a lovely place to work i don't know why i've never thought about sitting over here just sitting and working because it's really nice such a nice environment you know i can look outside and i can see you know the beach i can see the beach and the beautiful white sands and um i can see this flamingo hotel here this kilua hotel shanzu area it's so beautiful guys man you just need to come visit mm. We have a country and a half. And the fact that I even have the time to do it, I really am grateful. Yeah? So let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Mmm. Pretty nice. Mm hmm. These are vegetarian samosas. Generally, when you're not sure about um, what to eat when it comes to samosas, I think the best bet is to go vegetarian because most likely, even if there's going to be an issue, vegetables are usually quite safe. But meat, yeah, sometimes you can kind of like worry, but this doesn't look so bad. People are enjoying themselves there at the beach. Hey, I should show you some video. See those families there guys that's a man and his wife and his child kenyans on the beach they enjoy themselves the kid is running everywhere i think the kids are close school so they come to the coast to enjoy themselves so what am i going to discuss with you guys today um you know kind of um i like to kind of like do th do research i'm a researcher i think because i'm a researcher i like to always talk about things um you know not just from feelings but from knowledge Let's talk about something interesting. <laughs> I'm just coming up with a topic as we speak because I'm trying to vacillate between two topics. There's one topic I want to talk about. I really want to talk about the games. And believe it or not, today, as I was driving, I saw a group of Kenyan um, and Ugandan and Tanzanian cyclists on the road. And I was like, oh my God, I wish I had my camera. And I was like, like trying to see whether I could chase them down. I think they were actually uh, going to Kilifi. Kilifi is, you know, I'm in Mombasa area in Shanzu. They're actually going to Kilifi. They were driving down and they were followed by a police car. And then there was all these trucks and trailers at the back. And you know, because of Malindi, Mombasa Highway is only one. You could see people getting so frustrated because they can't overtake. I was so impressed because everybody was riding, you know, all the riders were there all in blue. And then they had their flags. I saw the Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania flag. You know, they're raising their flags and they're so proud of themselves. And you know, very you saw that the marathon, the men's marathon was won by a Ugandan uh, with a Kenyan name. <laughs> Ugandans will get to me. But a Ugandan and then a Tanzanian and then a Kenyan, you know, in that order. Gold and, gold and silver and bronze. Oh my God, I was so proud. So there they were cycling and i was like oh my god this is a picture taking opportunity for my african queen fans oh my god and then i didn't even have my camera i was so disappointed i'll never do that again then i said okay let me see if i can chase them i tried to chase them that wasn't gonna work because the traffic was so slow there was such a long queue i said okay bygones be bygones that one is missed but as god would have it eh? as i'm driving i see one lone cyclist by himself all in uniform and I was like, oh my God, there's one of them who's kind of like diverted off here. I chased him down and chased him down and then I caught on to him. Oh my God. I was like hooting, like stop, 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 stop. <laughs> the guy was so sweet. He actually stopped, you know, and he told me his name is Thomas and he lives within the area and his child is also a swimmer. I was like, what? When can I interview you? I really want to meet you. I really want to talk to you about this. This is something that's been on my mind because you see you guys, I think you remember, I don't know whether you're aware, but I am one of the previous organizers of those games. Mm -hmm. Those Commonwealth Games, I'm very, very proud to say that I worked there for like about three months last year in 2021. 
started off really, really, really well and really enjoyed it. Even submitted a report, you know, to one of their funders and donors. So when I see those games, I'm like, I'm thinking about my colleagues, the guys who are in charge of the TV screens, the guys who are in charge of branding. You know, guys, it's not just a matter of just going to work and sitting there. I learned a lot about how to brand the games, how to organize them, how to organize things like TV screens, how to um, organize for the accommodation of these all these athletes. You know, you hear that they're staying in some villages, um, how to get your teams together, especially when you're working remotely. You know, it was really quite difficult for them because many of us were working remotely. How to get a team who is working remotely to feel like they are a team. And then everybody's new. Many people are coming from outside. And we have some people who are veterans who have been organizing the Olympics and stuff. And then there are others who are completely brand new. So it was really a very interesting environment to work in. Very. I learned a lot. Anybody who's thinking about organizing games, get a hold of me because I can really, really help you, you know, because I've been on the inside. So at least I have an understanding about what it takes to organize those games. And apart from that, I have a lot of contacts. I was with this group called the Culture Team. So what they were doing is that they were showing the culture of Birmingham, the skills that I can transfer also to anybody who is interested in showcasing the culture of their country, their city or something like that. It's just so much to learn, guys. I, you know, I learned a lot. I can't even tell you in words what I learned, but not to deviate, but to tell you that, guess what? Yeah, I've secured an interview with that guy and I'm going to hope to try to capture these people when they're actually riding because they're coming back from Kilifi and then they're going to be going to, I think, Void. They're going to so many places, so I'm going to capture them again. I'll definitely try and bring that to you. So I was thinking of covering the games. I said, ah, I'm not going to cover the games right now. Let's talk about something else. That's more inter interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something else that's closer to home, okay? Which is about relationships. You know, you guys, mm, a lot of women have approached me, a lot, a lot of women, especially women who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even older, saying to me, how did you get married? <laughs> how did you find a spouse? Tell us, you know, we're lonely, we want to find someone. So this is what we're going to discuss. Yeah. Okay, continuing on, I'm going to discuss how do you identify a guy who is the marrying kind? You see, because for girls, let me tell you something, girls. This is for girls, okay? If you're a guy and you're listening, that's okay. If you have a girl or a lady in your life that you'd like to see married, I can help her by sharing my video with them because I'm going to be discussing how to identify a guy who is the marrying kind. And this is based on research. Let me tell you about a research study that I came across. The reason why men marry some women and they don't marry others. So there's this one researcher who, who is not a dating expert. He's just like, you know, a scientist. He went out uh, using his scientific skills. He decided to go out there and fight to try to educate women about, you know, what they need to know about men. You know, like how many men are going to be telling women what they should know about men. It's always like that. Lecture, lecture, lecture. Isn't it? So they have, he had this book called Why Men Marry Some Women and Not Others. And the author is called John Molly. And he said that there are some proven facts and figures that women should be aware of that will help them find and marry Mr. Right. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is tough. Eh? In fact, it needs science. So basically what he did is that um, one of his researchers came to him. And uh, because she's not like into commitment, she's kind of anti-commitment, she came to him and her name was Beth. And she wanted to know, you know, why men are drawn to her like bees to honey, yet they don't want to commit. So that's basically, isn't it, what we experience. So many men are after us, they look at us, even me, my DMs are full there. Hey, Queen Mo, blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of men who are chasing you. You know, none of them are thinking about commitment. In fact, many of them are commitment averse. They're just not interested in that. So basically, she, the guy tried to share his research findings with her. His research concluded that the reason why a man asks a woman to marry them and not another one is because of how that other woman treats him. So she just took that report and threw it back at him. I was like, excuse me, 
how many men are treated nicely and you know you guys so many men are treated nicely by their women but still they're not going to commit no matter what you do you heard what um, my house help was talking about the other day even if you do everything nice to him he'll still leave you you know and it happens yeah there's a man who are just commitment phobic okay so what she what he did is that he was so surprised that he decided eh what was wrong what did i say wrong why is this thing wrong why does she not want to believe it so um he said well he wanted to help her so he decided to ask her what was the problem and then she said you reinforce the myth that the reason why men don't commit is that it's is that the women in their lives do something wrong so it always comes back to women eh? it's always like eh it's because of you women that's the reason why men don't commit <laughs> and she said that's nonsense that's rubbish hmm and then she said in most cases it's the man in the relationship that decides not to commit he decides he's not ready even after he has been with this woman for some some time then he decides he's not even ready to get married so he has wasted your time all this time isn't it yeah and so he makes decisions that don't even help you when you start looking silly you've been dating him for so long he has never even been ready to marry you in the first place and that's what she told the researcher and so the researcher decided okay instead of getting pissed off or you know taking it personally he decided to conduct another study and put her in charge of it eh yeah? so now let's listen to this so because you see even if he tried to tell her oh you know this was a scientific study we used scientific parameters we had 300 women how many thousands of men she doesn't want to know she doesn't want to hear so he decided fine i'm going to actually conduct another study and i'm going to put you in charge about how to look for mr right okay guys so this is how they approached the study and i'm not going to say it in too much detail but basically what they did is that he decided you all the interviews that she had conducted that the guy had conducted with his team with with men who with single men who were planning to get married and single women who were planning to get married okay and also that's individual interviews and also with group interviews and then he expanded his study to include men who never planned to get married in the first place ever okay and so at first they had teams of researchers you know first they they decided to get um researchers who are mainly only men men to ask men but what happened is that they discovered that when men ask men they give politically correct kind of responses then when women ask men men respond also in a way that women want to hear you know or they kind of like um aggressive towards the women so then he decided okay we are going to get the people who are going to interview these single men who never plan to get married they're going to be 68 year old men so they're going to be men who don't represent any threat to these single men so that they can tell them the truth about why it is that they don't want to commit and why they don't want to get married all right so just stay with me guys stay with me don't lose don't get lost don't get lost because i want you guys to understand that there's a science to this and maybe because i'm an evaluator and some sort of a social scientist yeah maybe that's the reason why i managed to get married because i use my evaluation skills to evaluate different guys and eventually identified one yeah i identified the type of, first of all i identified the type of man and the range of men who might be ready for commitment and who might be ready to consider commitment with somebody like me who is also educated and also a parent and things like that now let's go to the conclusions of this study what they discovered is the study actually uncovered a few facts number 1 guys who have graduated from high school they start thinking about marriage when they're only between 23 and 24 that means that you know high school graduates can get married very very early and very young and you see this guys you see people marrying their high school sweethearts when men are just immediately out of high school they start thinking of of marriage early in life that's if they're not going to pursue their education anymore and then guys who are graduates from college for example they think of marriage between the ages of 26 and going up start thinking about marriage when they're much older and then um for men who go to graduate school that is they go beyond the first degree they are thinking about marriage between 26 and 20 and 33 years old so it's just to say that the more educated a man is the more years of education he has the later he is more likely to get married So you ladies who are educated for example you know in Kenya for example in Africa a lot of women are very ambitious yeah and they're going to school and pursuing masters and I don't know PhDs and bachelor's degrees so if you're thinking in that range so I've changed my camera and I really hope it's capturing me properly because I'm not so sure that it's really doing a very good job so this is the issue okay so then they said that when men go to graduate school it takes them longer to get into serious relationships 
So guys who are in universities and places like that, you know, they take a bit longer. So they're not ready to get married until a few years later. And I actually saw it too. When I went to graduate school, there are very many men who are getting married either in university or much later when they went to work. Okay. So it only that window of opportunity only stays open for like a short time. So if you're going to graduate school and maybe you're there with other graduate students, men, that's a time also, ladies, to think about your spouse. Don't think that you're going to find a man when you leave university. Sometimes it's just around there. It doesn't mean that they have to be in your same college, but they should be like college age or in a different university or you're meeting in other places. So that's a good time to think about when to find a spouse. Yeah. And that's actually good because you're also kind of like in your prime, you're usually quite young, looking beautiful and attractive, going out, having fun. That's when you can also meet men, okay, who are serious to get married. So a lot of women make mistakes. I think I also made those mistakes when I was a college student because I thought, ah, why do I care? See, I'll meet a man outside there one day. Uh, I'm not ready to get married. I need to get my PhD. I need to get this. I'm, I don't know. These men are not good enough for me. They're a broke student. Why do I want anything to do with them? <laughs> That's just a fact, guys. You know? In other cases, maybe you think that maybe there are better men outside there, better than in your college, because you're getting, they're so close to you, you know too much about them, you feel, ah, maybe this is not it. And in other cases, maybe you just genuinely just don't find the right guy. Okay? So let's continue with this. So they say that a majority of college graduates between 28 and 33 are at their highest commitment years and likely to propose. So the best age to find guys, this applies even to black men by the way, Chungus and also you know black men. So this between 28 and 33, that's a good time. So the period for well-educated men lasts a bit over like about five years, yeah? But they say that generally men remain good prospects until they're about 37 years old. So age actually matters, you know, because it has something to do with maturity. Alright, but now this is where the now this is when get things get weak. When things get weak is when a man is at the age of 37. When a man now is in his 40s, ah uh, please men. Now that's when things just you know things bite the dust. So one of the things you need to realize, ladies, is that just because you're ready to get married doesn't mean he is ready to get married. Yeah, guys. So you need to be aware of that. That you don't think that just because you are getting ready to get married that he will be ready to get married. So when you're dating, you need to date somebody who is actually ready to get married. Not just because of his age or not just because of education, but because you have similar goals. Sometimes what happens, there you are, you're ready, you know, to get married, you're dating a guy, but that time he doesn't have any intention of actually being serious with you. It has to be a shared intention. So we'll continue talking about this later. Because a few people have actually walked in I don't really feel this a nice environment anymore to be chatting but generally just to let you know that uh, for a, to find a man who is marriageable it means that he has to be looking he has to be ready he has to be looking he has to be at that stage he has to be mature enough he has to have been either you know um, thinking about it and you have to both be on the same course. So don't assume that just because you're with him, just because you're hanging out with him, that he'll eventually marry you. Most likely he won't. He probably won't, unless he tells you that that's what he's looking for. Men who hang out in single scenes, like for example, they're going out, partying, going to discos, going out to hang out with the boys and whatever. When you see a man who's hanging out a lot with the boys, it means most likely he's not ready to actually get married. And this applies to men who are older as well. When you see a lot of men who are just hanging out in bars and places like that, those guys are not ready to marry. The man has to be like on his own. Gets to the point when, you know, a man just needs to be on his own hunting. If you look at the way men hunt, men do not hunt like in packs. They hunt one at a time. They go out there and they put themselves out there and they hunt. So when you're looking for a guy who's ready to settle down, you have to find a guy who's on his own, not in a group. You see, like he's hanging out with a lot of different men, he's not ready to get married. And that's what this study actually says. The study says, when you see a man who's hanging out in the single scenes, their single place was the bar or the pool hall, where, you know, when they're going to play pool, they're going to play games, and single friends hanging out, you know. And when you're a very active member, when you have a man who's really into being with his guy friends, forget about it. That's not marriage material for you. So think about it, guys, you know. With professionals, professional men, 
also like to date younger women and they prefer the younger one. Another very interesting thing, finding, <laughs> is that if a man starts to look older because of being made to feel older, or maybe because he feels that he's losing his attractiveness, he'll decide to get married. That's the re one of the reasons, guys, why dating sites work very well. Because then you're able to match yourself or pair up with somebody who is looking for what you want or who's ready. Either they're looking for marriage or just a single life. It's difficult to meet up with somebody and just say, excuse me, are you looking to get married or just to stay single? But I think it's very important to ask them those questions right up front. I'll continue talking about this. I don't want this video to go on too long. I just want to say thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed your time with me here in Mombasa. Enjoying myself in the breezy, beautiful place. And it's nice to be inside with, you know, company, people all over. There are people sitting around. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed your time with me. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. To do is remember to subscribe, like, and share. Bye. Bye.